Hey guys, so it's here bringing you another video. Welcome back to another Challenger Spectate, and today we are watching Fnatic Nemesis, who is the ex or current Fnatic mid laner playing Kale mid. Uh, now, Kale has been maybe said to be a bit too strong, but there is another point to it, which we're going to have as the question of the day for this video. So let me know what you guys think, whether you're watching live on Twitch or in the comment section of the YouTube uh, video. Um,. Do you think late game champions have it a little bit too easy nowadays? Meanwhile, Sion getting caught level one. Uh, looks like, by the way, this is an AD Sion potentially because he's got that glacial and only AD, you know, Sions do glacial. Um, but yeah, do you think late game champions have it too easy that, you know, they are supposed to be these champions that scale like crazy, but they're, they're stronger in early game than they really should be? Um, I partially think yes, because like we're going to watch this game of Kale. Who, just reminding everybody, I want to say this at the beginning of this, she is a late game hyper carry. Um, you know, that's what Kale is. She's not supposed to have any strength practically in the early game. She is supposed to be down on farm. She is supposed to potentially die in the early game too. Just keep that in mind. And she's against an Aurelia, who obviously is known to be quite strong as well. Uh, even in preseason, I've seen a bunch of Aurelias go literally mental and be the, the the one champion stopping a victory, and then they turn the whole game for her team. Um, but anyway, I'm expecting to see... And well, here's the thing. Look at this. A Kale? No. That's not supposed to happen. I'm just saying that. Like, So you know when we said, do late game champions have it too easy? Why can a Kale... <laughs> One of the hyper carries in late game. Out damage uh, an Aurelia. Again, Aurelia obviously scales, but with uh, I always think in my head think Aurelia is a late game hyper carry too. She's not really. Since her rework, she's more of a mid to mid to mid game champion. She has an actually an okay early game too. Um, that shouldn't happen. You know, a Kale should not be able to just straight up auto attack an Aurelia to death at level one. And yeah, passive. Yeah, Aurelia didn't get her passive pro procs, but still, like the the Kale's damage, you guys saw, that was high damage. That wasn't low damage, and it was auto attacks. Kale's got Doran's ring. It's not like look at this damage. It's not like she even has like a Doran's blade making these auto attacks more. She's got press the attack, PTA, which obviously gives a stronger auto attack early. But like that was just mental. Uh, by the way, Kale doing a bit more damage, R going for the flashes, the echo. Aurelia in trouble. Is she going to die? Probably not. She's just going to survive. But all this is now happening. Is She's missing out a lot on farm. And now the Aurelia is going aggressive. And sorry, the Kale went aggressive and she's dead again. I've never seen this. I have never seen... This reminding everybody we're in a challenger game. There are pros in this match. Um, these are the best players on EU West. Literally the best players on EU West. And yeah. Again, I've, I've said it for ever, forever. I love doing Challenger Spectates because when we, one team has to lose, one team has to win. And a lot of the time, the team that loses, you know, League of Legends nowadays is a much more snowboardy game than it's been in many years. So the games themselves are not, you know, oh, the game's going to go to 40 minutes and it's kind of skill-based. One team's going to win or lose. It's just about which team feeds less or more uh, very often. Meanwhile, Lydia's trying to escape. Echo's going to go chase. Can Echo get anything? Probably not. Aurelia, by the way, level 2 is still looking to fight instead of looking to level. And she will just back away. Um, but yeah, so one team is probably going to do pretty bad. This Aurelia still has four farm. Four. At four minutes into the game. And she's a challenger player. Um, to me, that kind of, I, I don't know. For me, I just like showing that because it, it's the real human aspect of solo queue. Um, perfection is not something that you can get every single game. Even in Challenger. Even the best players. Aurelia's dead again, by the way. She's going to die to the tower. And the Nautilus takes the kill. Unfortunately, not the Aurelia. Um, yeah, people are pointing out, by the way, in Twitch chat, the Fiora is Caps. G2 Caps. Who I believe is the mid laner for Caps. And there's been a lot of drama I've seen about G2. Again, I, I avoid drama like the plague. Especially in 2020, that, that the year has kind of sucked. I don't really see the point of seeking out drama. Meanwhile, Pike going for this roam to try and get this kill. Looks like he's going to get it and does get a good shutdown, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't like drama. But like the League subreddit recently has just been like so hateful. And I just, guys, live your best life. Don't bring hate to anything. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> just be nice. I, I really don't. 
Um, anyway, Kale gonna go back. And part of, by the way, the reason why the champion is so strong, she's actually a champion that ignores mythic item first. So we, we've mentioned this a little bit, that there are some champions that don't rush mythics. Even though when I had a balance meeting with Riot a few months ago, I asked that question and they were literally like, yes, no, you'll be rushing them on every champion. Has is not the case. Um, there are very, very, very strong legendary items that are the non-mythic items. And some of these items are too strong to ignore first. One of them being Nasher's Tooth, I think. Um, it's insanely strong. Like, way too strong. And to me, it's obviously too strong. Just by its basic stats, it's too strong. It gives 100 ability power. I think it's 50% attack damage. And it gives, like, a decent amount of magic damage on hit per auto attack. It's mental. Um... It's clearly too strong just by looking at the item, but that hasn't been nerfed yet either. And yeah, for Kale, for Katarina, these items are crazy, even before a mythic item. Uh, as someone is even, you know, saying right now, what do I think of Katarina? Yeah, she's really overpowered as well. Um, there's a lot of strong champions in the game right now. Someone's saying, isn't it 80 AP? I think it's 100 ability power, but we will check when, Ka when uh, Kale completes the item. Uh, by the way, Nautilus waiting in, in the wings to see what's going to happen. Uh, Pike roaming. Nautilus is here. Unfortunately, there was a minion in the way, but the Aurelia now in trouble. Nautilus doing a bit of return damage. Uh, but you can see the meta in, in like, Challenger is, you know, support to roaming. Um, support to roaming to mid lane. Um, you know, quite early into the game, you could say. But uh, let's see, because I don't know if Kale can complete it. Probably not. She does go manage to go back, and yeah, she's not completing it. But yeah, the recurve bow, by the way, by itself is 25% attack speed and physical damage on hit. Um, again, unsurprisingly, the Scion is feeding. I don't really still to this day get AD Scion. To me, it's kind of trolling. There's so many better picks than Scion that fulfilled the AD carry role in top lane. To me, you know, AD Scion is either going to do well or feed. There is no in between. And to me, that's not a very good pick. If your pick is either feed or get fed, that is not consistent. Uh, at all. Pengu with 100 biddies. Thank you much, Pengu. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I, I've never been scared of AD Scion, personally. But, yeah. Meanwhile, the Lilia is a little bit too aggressive. Is going to walk into the jungle and Echo will finish off that kill. Apparently, I need a sneeze. And Twitch chat is telling me apparently the Scion is a known Scion player. Again, forgive my ignorance. I don't... Again, people know Huzzy and One Tricks. I don't follow who's who. Um, but apparently he's a known one trick AD Scion. Apparently. Meanwhile, Kale doing a bit of return damage, actually taking some tower damage, is out trading an Aurelia, even though he's taking some tower damage, which, you know, um, now is the point, by the way, to say is Kale is now level six. Meanwhile, hits level six, is going aggressive, tower dives, is now got the pike on her tail, misses the Q, ignite by the pike, who's been mid lane quite a lot this game. What can, and double kill. Holy moly, that's a level 7 Kale. She's a late game hyper carry, 2v1ing the enemy under tower, in between tier 1 and tier 2 towers. I'm sorry, that probably shouldn't happen. Just crazy. It's literally crazy. Yeah, Pike mid has been mid a lot, by the way, this game. Uh, but it hasn't really seemed to phase the uh, Kale at all. She's still 20 roughly farm ahead. She's 4 1 2. Going back now, double kill for the Lilia in bot lane. And I'm guessing. She can now complete the Nashers? Maybe not? No, can't, not anymore. But yeah, the question of the day literally is perfect for this game. This is a late game hyper carry. And our question of the day was, do late game champions have it too easy nowadays? Um, it's just silly. It's literally silly. Check the bits again. Oh, thanks 100 bits, uh, Luchston as well. Appreciate it, bud. But yeah, like, I don't know. And people will say, like, oh, the Kale's had a pretty good early game. She's got kills in the early game. And that's kind of my point is maybe you know this is controversial but i don't think a kale who is a late game hyper carry should really have the ability to kill things in the early game unless it's like really obviously that's going to be a free kill meanwhile the enemy team are going for a dive unfortunately kale didn't have ultimate if she had ultimate they probably all would have died there pike gets the kill who again pike is mid lane again but a nice return gank for blue team and they do get two kills for the one on kale uh, meanwhile, uh, for your obviously staying in top lane, just maintaining good farm. Well, okay farm. She actually is down on farm to the Scion. Um, again, I would imagine this is a pretty big counter for AD Scion. But a lot of things, I imagine, are a counter for AD Scion. But in theory, you know, if, an, if a Scion... And I've played this matchup before myself. 
if a scion ults a Fiora, it's the easiest W repost of Fiora's life because you just kind of wait for the scion to run into you and press W just before he hits. But Fiora can even repost his Q. So I, in, in a pure fight, I really don't see, you know, a Fiora really losing out to a scion. Scion's dead again. Lilia in top lane. Going to do a bit of clearing. Nautilus also in trouble. Pike in top lane. Misses his ultimate, but the Nautilus will go down to the Lilia. The Lilia getting quite strong for herself as well. Kale now, yes, has got Nashes. So yeah, it is 100 ability power, 50% attack speed, and currently 50... Look at that damage! Aurelius just got one shot, basically, by a level 8 Kale! Watch that again. Watch that again. She has one item. It's not a mythic item. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? That's too much damage for a level 8 Kale. If, again, my opinion is, if it was like, oh, you know, it's an early game champion, they do this, their scaling is bad, but their base damage is high, that's why they can do this. But again, this is a late game hyper carry. Kale is one of the strongest champions in late game. And she's doing this much damage in the early game. And it's not just that, it's the fact also... That she's not even rushing the mythic item. You know, the mythic items, like there's Hextech, Rocket Belt, on Echo. The mythic items are supposed to be the big, strong item of your build. The core of your build. She's ignored that. It's not even that she's got a mythic. Okay, she got the mythic. Aurelia's got components. No. She, yes, she's got a completed item over components of Aurelia. But it's not a mythic item. It's a legendary item. A normal item, as it were. It's nuts to me. It's nuts. Meanwhile, again, look at the trade, look at the trade. Is Aurelia dead? Kale could have got that kill. Actually misplayed. Is nearly dead. And by the way, I think Pike is coming mid lane probably again, if I had to guess. Um, okay, no, he's bot lane, but is on his way. You can see him on the minimap down here. But yeah, I, Kale could have got that kill. Just made a couple of mistakes. I think, like, even the Kale may be getting surprised, like, how much damage they're doing. Anyway, dive and dead. Oh, my God. <laughs> Meanwhile, Heimerdinger and Kale, there's Pike again in mid lane. Um, yeah, nuts, dude. I need to try this for myself. I ha I have to. I I'm a Kale player, you know. Even before all this craziness of new items, Kale is one of my champions. Uh, the meta, by the way, why is Kale mid Huz? You know, isn't Kale a top laner? I haven't really touched upon that yet. So, the meta of Kale is starting to shift from top lane to mid. Uh, basically, the reason being is in top lane. Arguably, top lane is the worst lane to be in a bad matchup because it's a really long lane um, and people can run you down and kill you quite easily and they can freeze you out and a lot of the time, junglers don't help top lane that much either. So for something really who's weak in the early game, um, it's often a bad thing in top lane more than anywhere else. Kel is weak in the early game or apparently weak in the early game or supposed to be weak in the early game. And a lot of mages in mid lane are weak in the early game. They're scaling champions naturally. Uh, meanwhile, Echo getting ulted by Kale. The damage coming down makes the Echo survive. Unfortunately, the Echo did not ult. But look at the Kale damage. Gets one kill on the pike. Is now going to potentially try to 2v1. Nearly getting both kills with the kite and gets the kill on the Aurelia. And does go down to the dot of uh, Lilia in the end. Um, so yeah, the, the Kale is going mid lane. Because she often will have a freer time in the early game. It allows the Kale to scale, basically. Uh, meanwhile, Cap's having a little bit of a fight with the 1 and 6 Scion. The Scion, by the way, is going Prowler's Claw. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, was like, I just find that funny. Oh, God. Um, meanwhile, uh, Heimerdinger in bot lane, by the way, has gone Everfrost. Lilia's naturally gone Leandri's. Um, Aurelia, I don't know what she's going. Again, I still don't know the complete item builds and components. Pike has uh, ignored a mythic item, has gone for a glaive first item. Saan is dead in top lane, but can he get the return kill? Again, the idea, by the way, just to make the point clear, AD Sion, to me, the reason why it's kind of a troll pick is because you're doing it designed to die. Meanwhile, I could try to get the pike. Um, you know, you take Glacial because when you die, you auto-attack a lot when you're dead, right? You get that increased attack speed or whatever you get when you're on AD, Scion, and Ghost. So the Glacial, when you're auto-attacking people, you slow them with Glacial, doing a lot of damage with AD. Meanwhile, Nautilus gets the ult off. Kale's probably going to get a kill here. 
Continuing the damage, does get the kill, double buffs as well, Nautilus misses Q just. Um, so that's the idea, is you're kind of designing AD Scion to die quite a lot. I'm never going to rate that pick quite highly, because if you're doing that, it also means you're making your opponent very strong. Um, it's just bizarre to me that people still do it. But again, if they enjoy it, you know, old Huzzy, I will say, would probably, you know, would have been completely like, oh, stupid is trolling. To me, it still is trolling, but if you are intending to win the game and you are actively trying to win the game, then go for it. If you enjoy it, go and do it, you know? We only live once. Enjoy the video game that you're playing as long as you're not trolling people. Um, and clearly this guy will say, he's not, look at the damage. Look at the, uh, oh my god, that's a lot of damage. Um, clearly he's not trolling. I'm just saying the pick to me is a bit trolly. That's probably the best way that I'll define it. Meanwhile, Kale kills the Aurelia again. 10-4-3 at 15 minutes into the game. Buildwise has got a Leeching Leer. Uh, with also Berserker Boots for that attack speed. Is pushing up mid lane and then will back away. Goldwise, the Kale has got 8.4 basically thousand gold. Compared to Aurelia's 4.5. And Aurelia is 0 and 10. And you know, just to make the point as well. The arguably, you know, there's been a bit of mid pressure from both teams in this game. But arguably, I'd say Pike and that has ganked mid more than the enemy's team. Um, meanwhile, Kale ult saving the Fiora does get the kill as well, which is really nice ult. Um, so the Kale has had more pressure on her and has come out clearly on top of this game. And the Aurelia is also obviously not a weak pick. Um, is 0 and 11. This to me is incredibly impressive and she gets another kill there. Someone's asking the runes. Uh, press the attack. So just try and press the attack is there to try and cover off uh, the weakness of Kale in the in the early game because PTA is a stronger auto attacking base rune early. Um, overheal, Al alacrity, and last stand because you know Kale should be expecting to be quite low health while fighting because you know she should. Um, and then on the enemy team, so domination, ravenous hunter. Uh, eyeball collection and attack speed, ability power, and armor. So obviously taking that adaptive damage. Pike, I think, looking for that severe kill, doesn't manage to get it. And now Kale, for the first time this game, making it down to bot lane. Um, Heimer Digger might be a little bit annoying to get to, especially that he's, you know, a pretty safe pick as it as it were, but also running that, you know, frozen -y thing. Echo trying to do his best, will get that one kill. Get Echo still an absurdly strong champion. Uh, you know, some champions we've mentioned have been weak and these new items are strong um, and made them strong but there are champions that were always strong and they're just maintaining strengths with obviously everything changing uh yeah so mythic item by the way for kale is rift maker um so our 80 ability power so worth knowing the mythic item gives less ability power than the nasher's tooth just to point that out um, but ability power, haste, oh, is dive happening, Nautilus comes into the queue, that damage is ridiculous, she just melted. Um, but the, the, the use is void corruption, for each second in combat, deal 3% bonus damage, maximum 15%, at maximum strength, the bonus damage is dealt is true damage instead. So if you guys remember when Kale rework came out, at level 16, the rework actually made Kale do true damage. This, this mythic item with Kale now is kind of giving that back to Kale. So Kale does insane damage, scales amazingly well, and you're giving her true damage again. And obviously it's not all of her damage is true. Whoa, you're going aggressive. Not all of the... Oh, she flashes the E by Pike and she just obliterates the Heimerdinger. Just again reminding everybody, this is pre-20 minute Kale. And obviously, yes, she's insanely fed this game. Meanwhile, Aurelia, you could probably tell, is a bit tilted. So she goes for an all-in and just dies again to the Kale. Kale may go back. And obviously save the big bounty that she's now got on her head. You never want to give those big bounties to the enemy team. While her team is making their way into the base, Sion unfortunately is dead again. Again, has to look for those kills with the Glacial. Nearly kills the Fura, but she just managed to survive. And the first inhibitor will fall. Echo looking for a 2v1. Look at the damage by Echo. Doesn't get the kill in the end. Lilia just survives. Kale gone back and has bought... Um, so she has, by the way, now got Medjai. And what did the Kale max first? She maxes E now. Um, so before, when um, Gunblade was in the game, but obviously Gunblade has been removed, Kale's max Q. Kale now maxes E for the basic reason of it's the best synergy with Nasha's Tooth. So the na on-hit damage from Masha Ma Nasha's Tooth uses also your E as Kale. So it's the biggest chunk that you're going to do. And now E is no mana cost. 
So the Q still costs mana, the E doesn't. So it's just, oh, it's the better thing to go. Look at that damage. The Aurelia just literally melts in two to three auto attacks now. Um, so yeah, you're maxing E now on Kale with, with modern day items. But th this damage is frightening. Um, a Triforce by the, oh, here we go. So Sion trying to escape. Gee, again, reminding he's squishy. He's not doing, oh, so someone said in Twitch chat, look at it, three auto attacks and he's dead. Three auto attacks. Um, so I obviously laughed earlier. Prowler's Claw for AD Scion. You just saw he can use it while he's in his ghost format when he dies. Which, that is quite a good synergy. Because again, a lot of the time Scion's weakness is not being able to get to people. Well, obviously having Prowler's Claw makes you jump to somebody. And then you start auto attacking them to proc the Glacial. Um, but yeah, there, there is Kale. Like, legit two to three auto attacks killing people at 21 minutes into the game. So question of the day, is late game champions having it a bit too easy now? I They do just kill her. I arguably would say yes. Like for me, like this Kale, yeah, is insanely fed, but she got fed by doing a lot of damage in the early game. You know, this Kale was out trading in Aurelia from the beginning of the game. To me, that shouldn't really be a thing, but it is a thing. Uh, Nautilus always gonna, also going to get caught, and the enemy team managed to stop the game ending, um, which is good for them, I guess. Dragon is be is up, so can the enemy red team do dragon before the enemy team respawn? It would be good for them, but I don't know if they're going to have time. Uh, but yeah, someone's also pointing out, it's not the fact that the Kale's damage is high. It's not the fact that she's killing people. Her farm. She's also in 221 farm. She's more more than double the Aurelia by quite some margin. Uh, it's Kale teleporting is level 15 again. Nearly level 16 would give the per you know the perma AOE damage. Is looking for the Lilia who was not doing the dragon. She was doing the uh, scuttle crab instead, and they do manage to slow her to stop her continuing this Kale's rampage. Uh, item by the way for the Kale. So it's got Rift Maker, Cosmic Drive. So dealing damage with abilities grants movement speed for four seconds. So a great item for Kale because often her struggle is staying on top of people. Has now hit level 16 though versus a level 13 dead Heimerdinger. Okay. Um, I don't perfectly know by the way right now where she's getting all that healing from. Because she was just healing with auto attacks. And I don't think she has any auto attack healing. Unless I'm crazy. Does she have any auto attack healing? Uh. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Oh is it Rift Maker? Oh it's Omni Vamp. Wait Kale went into the tower. It's the. 15% Omni Vamp. That's what it is. So that 15% Omni Vamp looked like she was just healing like crazy. But there you go. There is a 22 minute Kale. 2-3 to three auto attack kill each champion on the enemy team and obviously yeah she's insanely fed this game as an insanely fed champion should one shot things you know that's just by design how the game should be but the argument that i'm having here is i like kale i'm a fan of kale i'm not i'm not against kale but this kale was so much stronger in the early game than i think she should be out trading in aurelia doing way more damage in the early game anyway than she should be i think that's the argument and the reason why that's happening, by the way, is because items are so much stronger than they were before that if a champion does okay in the early game, gets one item, then instantly they're really high uh, or they're really strong. Um, that's just crazy to me. So yeah, Pengu also, thanks very much for the gifty subby. Much appreciate. But that's going to be it, everybody. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your opinions down below. It's probably a topic that a lot of people have opinions about. Um, but yeah, mental. If you guys did enjoy, throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.